Good, 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 good morning or evening or afternoon as the case may be. I'm here for the last regular episode of Steam Team's recent purchases, well the last in series two anyway. Um, coming up today we've got some uh, interesting things and we've got some, uh, and we got one special item right at the end, uh, which was a surprise to even me. Um, Oh, what else we got coming up? Well, uh, just wait and see, really, because I can't remember. Um, anyway, we got a lot to get through today. I say that every week, but today we have, especially with my big surprise at the end. So uh, let's crack on. Right. First up, we have this. A jigsaw puzzle. I'm not even going to bother taking it down to Calico because uh, I know what its answer will be and last time I did it it wasn't very pleasant so um, let's get this elastic band off right. and um, this is a puzzle that's illustrated by Owen Bow, one of my favourite illustrators and it cost me 75p um, you don't see this puzzle very often. Um, I had it when I was younger, but I I think this is I think I've only I've well I think I only have this one now. Um, I don't still have the one from when I was younger, and you don't see these ones in charity shots very often. Um, let's see when it was made. It's made in 1996 when I was two, so yeah, that would have been about right when I had it when I was younger. Right. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to take it to see Calico because for obvious reasons. So I'm just going to make it up myself here. Uh, so uh, now we're going to fast forward, I expect, unless the episode runs short, in which case you'll be able to uh, watch me put it together in normal speed. Well, I'll see you in a minute. There we go. Let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at it in a bit more detail. As we can see, we got Harold at the top there, and uh, Bulgy looking rather miserable as usual. Then we have Thomas pulling Annie and Clarabel, the fat controller in his uh, yellow convertible, which is seen in several Owen Bow puzzles, and Percy there going across the bridge. Down here, obviously, we have the uh, normal Owen Bow signature, and uh, some people waiting at a bus stop. The uh, amount of detail in this is absolutely magnificent. Just take a look at the church, for example. The amount of detail is staggering, and I think that's why this is my favourite Owen Bow jigsaw. As you can see there, just looking down that street under that bridge, you can just see the amount of attention to detail that was taken with this uh, illustration. Anyway, we'll, we better move on. Bit of a rare book now. Uh, this one is a compilation of railway series books. I say quite rare, I have seen one before, but um, I still believe they are quite rare. This cost me a pound, and it says down here, six volumes in one, and that's exactly what it is. Uh, inside we have a, a relevant inscription dated Christmas 1983, which, as we can see over here, well you probably can't, but I'll tell you, this edition published in 1983 by Book Club Associates by arrangement of Kay and Ward. So uh, this was given as a Christmas present on the year it came out. And inside you have Toby, the tram engine. Uh, uh, then we have uh, Gordon, the uh, big engine. And then uh, 
we have Edward the Blue Engine and then we have four little engines and then we have Percy the Small Engine and finally we have eight famous engines here uh, I've only just noticed this actually tuned by W Audrey this is the Harold Heli the Harold the helicopter uh, chant uh, said by uh, uh, Percy at the end of Percy and Harold I didn't know that was there actually um, I don't understand how to read music so uh, if you do there you go look uh, notation by E. Trundle. No idea who that is. And uh, yeah, I had no idea if that was there. I didn't. I suppose it must be in the original Railway Series book as well. Um, yeah, a, a great book that. Um, same there as it is here. So when new it. Oh no, that's not a price. I thought it was a price. It's a code. Um, I paid a pound for this, like I said. But um, definitely a very good book that, um, yeah, very nice. Next we have another jigsaw puzzle. Again, I'm not even going to bother taking this down to Calico, but uh, this one's in a rather badly bent and ripped box, and I think that was my fault actually, I think I put a load of videos on top of it. Um, I'd probably fix it, some tape, but um, anyway, uh, I think all the pieces are there, I am going to make it, just to make sure, this is an older, um, an older jigsaw, I think, um, made by Michael Stansfield, and uh, there's the dimensions of it there, and uh, again, it's illustrated by Owen Bell, I believe, um, oh, there's the date there. 1989, so after the second series, um, 30 piece wooden jigsaw, and it is, you know, it is wood and not cardboard, um, so uh, let's see if it's all there. Mm -hmm. going to check the bag. I can't find the missing piece, uh, which is unfortunate because it's actually Thomas's face that's missing. <laughs> Uh, the mad controller strikes again. Um, it might be in there. I I can't really get to have a good look at them. If I do find it, I will let you know. Um, anyway, uh, the fact that it's made out of wood is slightly annoying when you're making these jigsaws because it, it tends to move when you go to put the piece in, and uh, that can be quite slightly frustrating. So I think on the whole, I prefer normal cardboard pieces. Uh, but it's a nice jigsaw, um, pity it isn't complete, I think I've had this one before. Anyway, I paid 50p from a charity shop, and um, yes, there's a piece missing. But, uh, I think I might have it, I'm not sure, but I know a couple of pieces did drop out in the bag, so if I find it, I will, I'll, let, I'll let you know, and I'll put this back in the box without uh, breaking it, if I can. Oh no, it's all that, it's broke. <clears throat> Never mind. Might be coming back to that one later, so oh, I'll sub that. Something I don't usually buy now. Uh, these are some Thomas sandals. Um they're brand new. Um 
Now you're probably wondering why did you buy asking why did I buy these because they was at the front of a charity shop in a pound in a pound box so and they're brand new so I thought why not uh, size seven UK size seven uh, it might be it might be big enough to fit Calico um, he's going on holiday soon I'll have to go and have a look in a minute anyway. Um, it says here these were made in 2011 by uh, William Lamb Footwear, Wakefield, UK. Um, and there's also another tag here that's been ripped off. UK 7 European uh, size 24. Available in sizes 4 to 9. I'll, I'm going to cut the... Uh, string on them. Hold on, bear, bear with me a minute. Blunt. Completely blunt. Ah, oh, there we go, got it. Right, I'm going to go and take these and see Calico, because he's gone on holiday in a couple of weeks' time, so uh, these might come in handy for him. What do you want? Very good acting there. Anyway, I, <laughs> <laughs> I know you're going on holiday in a couple of weeks' time. That was ago. But yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. so so going yeah. as a father. You know, Spencer's going to be building sandcastles, and he's looking forward to it. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I've got you these. Yeah. All right. They're brand new. Yeah. They're sandals. Yeah. Can I try them on? Yeah, of course you can. There you go. They're for you. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Just take my shoe off. Okay. It won't fit. Oh, no. Uh, well, you know what that is, don't you? You idiot. Yeah, yeah, it's too small. No, because you don't wear socks with sandals, do you? Oh, yeah, duh. How, good, how stupid can I get? Yeah, I know. My sock off. It's cold out here, you know. That's why, if it doesn't look as big, it's because it's not it's cold. But no, it's still too small. Hang on, you got smaller feet than I have. You know what that means, don't you? Smaller socks. Yeah, exactly. I've, that's shoes. Um, perhaps these will fit you then. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's try it. Yeah, they look great. And uh, oh, I've just stood in cat's work. What? Feces. They come again. Oh, oh, oh dear. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll go and get some kitchen roll, and I will bring it back later. All right. Hurry up. <coughs> what have I told you about using your potty? <sighs> Here's something you will have seen before. This is the puzzle block picture cubes. Six scenes on nine real wooden picture cubes. I, uh, this appeared in an episode of recent purchases over on my channel, the old series of recent purchases. Um, it, uh, it only appeared uh, briefly though I think. So uh, I've bought another one. Uh, I don't know what happened to the first one so I'm not going to be giving this away. Um, this was made in 1983 when the when the TV series was just being, uh, you know, was sort of entering its production and and things. So um, inside you have these photos of what each picture cube should look like. These have been a bit creased and uh, stuff, but that's a bit of cardboard. But they're still uh, fine, really. There's only four there, and apparently there should be six. Uh, is there any more under? Ah, yeah. I think this, I think the final two might be under here. Oh no, there's only one there. We're missing one, but never mind. Uh, let's have a look, shall we? Let's start with the one of James. Well, there's two of James actually, but let's start with this one. This promo of James, shall we say? Uh, That's not right. There 
there we go. There's a promo of James. Now if we just tip the cube over that way. Oh no. Then we've got a rather blurred picture from uh, the episode, um, oh god, Jane's and the Coaches, yes, that's it. And uh, we flip it again. We've got a picture of James from, I think it's the episode, James and the Express. Um, as you can see, it's got down there copyright K and Ward, who obviously own the right, at this time anyway, to the Railway Series, and Brittlecroft, 1984. Um, let's flip it again. Nearly right. There is it. There it is. I think this is from Percy Runs Away. And uh, let's flip it. Oh no, we got that one. So we flip it once and then turn it. Right. Flip it once and turn it. Oh. Once and turn. Turn right, there we go. There's a promo of Thomas from the first series. Uh, um, what, what do we get now? So flip it over twice. I think this is the final one, I'm not sure, but. Twice, and we get. Can you tell who it is yet? I tried not to. I tried very carefully not to let that slip into a Rolf Harris accent. Um, um, there we go. And then we got a first series promo of Toby to finish off with. I think that's all of them. So anyway, uh, quite rare I should imagine, on this side there it's got a strange looking illustration of Thomas. And then we got, there's three of the images, another strange looking picture of Thomas and there's the other three there. Right, and this was made by, uh, I can't read the logo, is it Jotstar? Jot a star. I don't know. It's not Ringo Star anyway. Um, let's stick these back in the box. Could have made them in the box actually. It probably would have been easier. Um, oh no. Uh, there we go. There we are. A nice find there, I think. Um, oh, oh, I've got the. Uh, the cards, hold on. I don't know how much I pay for it. Uh, there's a price tag on it anywhere. On the bottom, no. But I guessed it would have been about a pound. So, absolutely brilliant, really. Next up is a cup. A C-U-P. As Calico used to ch chuckle at. Um, uh, this cup 
you should all know where this came from really uh, it's got James and Thomas on there and if you look at the bottom you'll get an even better idea of where it's come from Kinnerton which, make, which makes chocolate this uh, would have been sold with an Easter egg in the top there and as you can see there it was made in 2004 or around then and um, it's just a cup really there's a, not much you can much you can say about it it's quite small um, I just bought it because it was 20p I think it was and uh, why not so uh, yes a Thomas and James cup might give it to Calico for his birthday present who says videos are obsolete videos are obsolete use a DVD well bes besides Calico um, I love videos um, I much prefer them to DVD I'm, I, I'm not really sure why but uh, I, I just think that's the proper way to watch something and uh, I actually like all the grainy sort of picture quality when when you're watching an old show uh, especially like the first few series of Thomas which come out in the 80s you know I, I think watching it on video is the proper way to watch it uh, obviously the quality isn't so great in videos now it's hard to find a video that plays perfectly but um, I, I love I love all that I love like slight flickering and and things and um, which is why I walked into a charity shop and I saw all of these and I just had to buy them I do I do or, or did have them all I must admit but um, uh, I think I explained this before I had them in a uh, wardrobe in my old wardrobe and they've got damp and uh, they do still play but not so well and it tends to uh, mess up the video player the trick is if you ever have a video with damp around the spool around the uh, tape inside what you, what I do is I have a video player that has never worked that doesn't work it won't play videos but it'll still rewind and fast forward videos alright so I stick them in the broken one rewind and fast forward it a few times and it gets all the dust off the reel and it probably goes into the video player so I wouldn't recommend doing it with a video player that works but this one's broken anyway so and it and it will usually get all the damp and mould off the uh, video and it, you, it should well more often than not it plays fine after that if you put it in one that does work but I have actually uh, messed video players up putting videos with mould or damp in a player it's uh, then stopped working I don't have a lot of luck with video players in the last five years I would say realistically I've got through 25 video players no seriously um, they're quite hard to come by now but I find those a charity shop which has always got a couple in so uh, when one breaks I just go and get another one for a fiver so I think it's worth it to be honest I even like watching my old Genesis concerts on video even though they are available on DVD and more often than not I've got the DVD as well but like I said there's just a feel about a video which is just it, it feels right you know I suppose it's I suppose a lot of it's like I grew up with videos, you know, when I was young, DVDs came out but they were so expensive we couldn't afford them, we couldn't afford a DVD player and or uh, couldn't afford to buy the DVDs for it so we stuck with videos for a long time. It was only in about 2004 I think we got a DVD player which is quite late actually. Uh, but yeah, I used to love going into Woolworths, which is now gone, and uh, seeing the new Thomas videos on display, you know, and it, it just brings back memories of that, really. So uh, let's just take a moment to have a look through each one.
I'm not going to give any away. I might have some of them already, but it's, it really is just down to the postage. Uh, the postage cost on videos is just too expensive for us, I'm afraid, so uh, we won't be giving any away. Um, I paid 25p each for these videos, which was a steal. Uh, well, they, they, as uh, Calico has said, they are, seem to be obsolete now, but there are still uh, people like me that will buy them. Um, charity shops, uh, I only know one charity shop now that sells them, and it's a charity shop in Calico's hometown. Um, but will they be selling it for much longer? The best place to find uh, videos now is boot sales, but even then they're getting very few and far between, which is sad really. Because some of these videos are rare and worth a lot of money, like the Tugs videos, they ain't cheap if you went online. You'd be looking at about a tenner each for a Tugs video, and uh, someone crazily thought that would be worth 50 quid. Probably worth a tenner, but... Um, yeah, so I suppose sitting here, if I was to sell these, which I wouldn't, uh, it's, I suspect you got easily 30 quid worth of video videos here. Um, so, uh, yeah, it is a real shame, but luckily places like eBay and Amazon still sell videos, so people are buying them when they see them and they're still circulating around, because, you know, it's a shame to think, you know, like sooty videos that are so hard to come by are being thrown in the bin, you know now by charity shops you hand them into a charity shop they just throw them straight in the bin now so uh, and that's a that's sad that really and um there was a couple of sooty videos with this as well i didn't bring them out just really for time constraints but there was sooty's restaurant one of the uh, the uh, animated series of sooty and um i think it was a sooty and co one it might have been clocks galore anyway i don't know uh, i just brought the thomas ones out um uh, yes, there they are. That was a bargain. How much do I pay in total? Well, let's just work it out. Fifty a pound, pound fifty, two pound, pound two pound fifty. About two twenty-five, and with the sooty ones, it was probably about closer to three pound, three fifty, something like that. So, um, that was an excellent buy, a really excellent buy worth it for the Tugs video alone really. Maybe we'll get round to doing an STQ sometime, sometime soon but that's not my decision to make unfortunately. Anyway let's move on. Something really rather strange now. Um, there it is. This is plastic but it's meant to represent stained glass and I should imagine you hang it in a child's bedroom over the, in front of the window. Um, it's a bit weird really. It kind of looks like it was meant to be on, come off, you know, come off something else because there's no sort of licensing info on it. Um, I mean there is a possibility it could be, you know, homemade. Um, and I must admit, that wouldn't surprise me, because it does look a little bit amateurish, the way the colours are sort of all blotchy and uh, things. That might just be how they make, you know, how they do it. But, um, yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. Um, yeah, it's strange, it's got a little hook there, so you can hook it up. Um, I like it, though, and it cost me, I think, about 25p, so just a very nice thing, really. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. If you have any idea where this came from, if it's a legitimate product or something that was homemade, or uh, you know, if you know anything about this, just uh, or any other items that I've been confused on or I've made a mistake on, just leave a comment below or email us at calico tv one two three at gmail dot com, and uh, we'll read your emails and messages out if you've got anything to say. So. And there's a fly in here somewhere. Anyway, let's just put this up against the window so you can get a better look at it. Well, let's put this in the window. Make sure it don't fall off. There we go.
Now for a jigsaw I have, I have personally never seen before. This is called My Favourite Characters and of course it features Thomas, everyone's favourite character. But we've also got Tots TV at the top there, Noddy, which will please Dalek Slayer, I know he's a fan of that. And Spot the Dog, whose creator has just died. Well, I say just died, he's died a couple of months ago When by the time you're watching this. Um, on the side there it says based on the books by Enid Blyton and the BBC television series. That's obviously referring to Noddy. Um, on the other side we've got the spot licensing info. On there we've got Tots TV which can only mean Thomas is there. Now we can uh, see from the box that it was made around about 1996. You should imagine it was made for charity or something like that. I mean I don't know but... Usually when you see like kids shows bundled together like this, it's usually for charity. And actually, a good thing about it is, is that they've already been made. And I'll come back to that puzzle in a minute. There's the Thomas puzzle, that's the one we're most concerned with. I'll just get the others out there. Right? Tots TV. Spot. And Noddy. They've obviously made them up in the charity shop to check that they're all there. Let's just take a uh, closer look, shall we? There's the uh, Spot puzzle. I don't know much about Spot, but uh, I know it's created by Eric Hill. Over here we have Tots TV, which I uh, used to like as a kid apparently, but now I can't stand it. I find it the most boring children's show ever made. Uh, complete opposite of Rosie and Jim. <laughs> Even though they're made by the same company, Ragdoll Productions. Uh, uh, down here. Noddy, a decent show there, um, an old style sort of puzzle, um, probably based on a book illustration this puzzle, has a classic look about it, and uh, there's Noddy look, with, uh, and there's the uh, big ears, and over here we have the one that we're most interested in, this is the Thomas Jigsaw, and it shows Thomas James and Oliver, and a pair of mountain goats. Um, this puzzle has been, uh, has is available as a floor puzzle, I think. I can remember this one, so uh, it must be. And they've obviously scaled it down and put it in this box with uh, this. Uh, let's see if I can see Owen Bell's signature, because he illustrated this. Uh, on first glance, I can't see it. It probably chopped it off. It's probably down here on the rails by uh, in front of Oliver, but I can't see it. Um, definitely made bio and bow though. But over here, as you saw when I opened up the box, we've got another Thomas Jigsaw, and this is not part of the same set. This is uh, I, I know this jigsaw. You get you get a box with four jigsaws in, and it shows the four seasons, but they're bigger than this and don't have the writing on it. At the top we got Mattisons, which I'm not sure, but isn't that a company that makes jam? And uh, and uh, as we can see down here it says Thomas and Trevor, the Four Seasons collection, made in England by Ravensburger Limited, uh, 1998. This come out. See, I didn't. I thought Mattisons was a American company that made jam, but I might be getting that completely made. Made. I might have got that completely messed up with something, confused with something else. Um, uh, perhaps this was something they gave away with free whatever it is Mattisons sell. You know, um, and you got to try and collect them all. I can imagine uh, some sort of Thomas promotion. Um, probably to promote the fifth series of Thomas in 1998. Um, yeah, so there we are, they're all there and we got an extra Thomas jig, so that's uh, a good deal. I think I paid 50p for this uh, puzzle. And uh, let's move on, shall we? This last item was a surprise even to me. It's the Spills and Thrills on Sodor set. from the Take and Play range. You're probably wondering where I got this from because you, I don't collect Take and Play, you know I wouldn't have gone out into a shop and bought it. But maybe this clear can clear it up for you. Here's a letter 
from Fisher Price. Congratulations, you have won the Thomas and Friends Take and Play Spills and Thrills on Soda or Playset from the Thomas and Friends magazine. Please find your prize enclosed. So yes, I won this in a competition in a Thomas magazine. As someone that enters a lot of competitions but rarely wins anything, you can imagine my surprise when this set turned up at my front door in a massive box. I honestly have no idea how much this set would retail for. I would imagine it would be about 30 quid, so it's quite a good prize. I am going to set it up. I wonder if I've got enough room in here. I'm just going to check the, uh, like the dimensions of it. If I can find any. Maybe on the sides, I should imagine. Oh, well, I'll find it in a minute. Well, I'm going to have a go at making it now, anyway, so, uh... Me, uh, the instructions here. Oh, there's Thomas. This and this. Um. It took me longer than I'd like to admit, but eventually, with a, with some help, I managed to get it up. The thing that actually confused me was is the fact that it isn't freestanding. If you, it needs to be lent against something, and that uh, that was the thing that was sort of um, confusing me a bit, but. Um, to be honest, I think that is a bit of a poor design, that it won't stand up. You know, they should have some supports on the back to make it freestanding, because you have to lean it against a wall. In fact, it had I been a bit more clever, you can see on the box that they've actually got it slent against a wall as well, so that was my own fault, but I just didn't, I just expected it to be able to stand up properly. But we got there in the end. Alright, let's take a look at this set in action. I uh, have a feeling that kids were more, easy, uh, more easily amused today. Uh, uh, not a massive fan of this playset, to be honest. But let's have another go. Ready? It's not a bad set, but my main problem with it is that Thomas is easily derailed. And it's something to do with this corner here. If he, if he hits this wall at a certain speed, he seems to topple over. He didn't do it that time. <laughs> That's a bit embarrassing, but um, he does do it. Um, and that, that, that could be improved. Let's take a closer look at the model itself. This is the first new style taken plate model I've seen and I am impressed. Um, the Thomas is, they've really captured Thomas's CGI face there. He looks uh, brilliant. And um, he's got some good details as well. I don't know quite know what that red bit on the back is. It looks like a clip of some sort. Um, 
I know they have changed the magnet quite recently, uh, but this is, uh, I haven't seen one with a new magnet, well, I haven't I noticed, to be honest, but uh, this model is actually really nice, and then, of course, what happens is when Thomas comes down, comes down the, uh, the slope, he hits, that clips onto him, um, that's a nice feature. On the uh, back of the box it says inspired by uh, Spills and Thrills DVD. This would have actually made quite a good episode, Thomas crashing into a paint factory. I could see that um, being a good episode. Maybe uh, there's something for them to think about. You know what, actually, the more I actually go on, have a go on this, actually, the more I enjoy it. It's uh, I actually take back what I said earlier about it not being... Uh, about kids today, you know, being easily impressed. It's actually quite fun. It's something you'll want to do over and over again. I don't know if like tender engines would work on it, but one thing I did like is the fact that you ain't got to stick any stickers on yourself, you know, because usually you get a little pack with stickers in and they can be a pain in the uh, in the backside to put on. But um, the fact that these have already got stickers on is very good. It did say though that some of the bits can't be taken apart once they've been put up, which is a bit disappointing. Um, but, uh, yes, it's actually quite good fun when it works. See, like I said, sometimes it does get stuck and that can be a bit annoying, but... I do like how he comes out the shed with that on. That's, clever. That's a clever design there. Ah, uh, what the hell, once more. <laughs> See, 50% of the time it doesn't work properly, but when it does work it is quite... <sighs> Hold on. <laughs> And with that, we come to the end of another series. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. Um, it's been good fun. Um, seeing some different things for a change. You know, not just all books, was it? This oh, there wasn't. Oh, yeah, there was a book there. But, um, yes, this is the last in the series of regular editions of this show. We will be having our li almost live episode, which is where we announce the competition uh, giveaway. Uh, winners and that is uh, the date that you need to get your giveaway entries in is on the screen now and the now on the screen is the air date for the uh, fifth episode where we announce the uh, winners all right so uh, get all your entries in before uh, the date that you just the, the date of the entries uh, you just saw a few minutes ago and um, I'm sorry there wasn't any giveaways in this episode but uh, there will there will there'll be more uh, at some point I'm sure but uh, until then from me it's bye bye everybody bye bye and from Calico it's can somebody get me some toilet roll please right. Speaking of calico, I better go down and take the uh, kitchen roll. See ya. series almost done calico yeah it's been great you know but the only bad thing has been the pollen count has been so high so my my hay has been terrible yeah mine has too I, I, actually speaking of hay, hay fever i think i'm gonna sneeze keep pass me a tissue please thank you <laughs>
Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, would you pass me that one for? Gross. Oh. oh, you are unbelievable. Oh, it's gross. That is. <laughs> I know, it's, no, it's gross, it's been on your foot. You. Calico, come back, I didn't mean anything. Calico. Oh, God, I've stood in it now. <laughs> I, I've stood in it now, so it's equal, all right? Calico. Calico. See, uh, see it's, uh, yeah, we're right. Calico, you forgot. Calico. Keep him. What am I going to do with him? Well, do whatever you want. There's only for this series I like to I've dropped him. Oh, well. See you later. Bye bye. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. Ugh, it's all over my phone. <laughs>